Alright, what we've got here is going to be a video about a pair of cassette decks. Okay, so maybe that fade wasn't totally necessary, but I thought that it was, you know, bitching the shiznets. Anyways, the top one here is a Pioneer CTW600R. And the bottom one is a Sony TCW32, both of which I have not made videos about yet. And they're both in pretty good condition. There's not really much you can say about a cassette deck that I haven't already said, other than the fact that these are slightly less electronic than the Technics over there and the other Technics that I've got, which is sitting over here, in that I can eject without having to have the unit powered on, and they're not motorized either, but I've had Technics decks that are not motorized as well. This one's the same way. I think this one closes with a little bit more oomph than the Sony does. But both of which are pretty good, and both of them also have good headphone ports on the front. Something that the Technics don't have. But what these don't have is these switched outlets on the back. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back of these flip them around. I've only got 12 minutes to do this, so <laughs> on this tape. I'm going to have to import this tape and start editing these videos. But on the back of, this is the Pioneer on the top. You have a switch for an MPX filter, which is Dolby, I believe. Somebody labeled all of these, but we've got our line inputs for recording and playback. We have control outputs. That's presumably for controlling other piece of a, pieces of a stereo system, component stereo system. There's your power cord, and here is our information. I don't see a date on here anywhere, but suppose... Not supposedly, what's the word I want? Perhaps, maybe, that in there will indicate a date code. Maybe there is a date code on here somewhere. The Sony doesn't either. We can see on the Sony we've got line in and out, just the same as the other one. It doesn't have a switch for an MPX filter or controls for your component stereo system. And there's your data plate, or like just a data stamp. Only uses 15 watts, while the other one uses 19 watts. Not sure what the difference is there. I'm not, I wonder what is under license of Star SA. Let me turn that light off so you might be able to read that a little better. Star SA in Brussels, Belgium. I wonder what that is. Maybe somebody can shed some light on that. The, the uh, Pioneer, at least, it looks like somebody's been inside because unfortunately there's a little bit of cracking going on here. This wasn't put on properly. But it does still seem to work regardless. I'm going to need to clean it off because it's kind of dirty. But uh, I think that's really all about I can think of to say about these. You can take a look at the controls on the front. At least of the Pioneer, we've got your usual, you know, playback controls. It is auto-reversing, I think. Yes, it is auto-reverse. You can set it to play in reverse mode or just play and auto-stop. It claims to have a cassette stabilizer feature. Again, I'm going to have to turn the light off so you can read that. Maybe not. Yep, there we go. Cassette stabilizer. Dolby B and C noise reduction. Auto tape selector. And it's got synchro copy and re relay play. I'm not sure what that is either. And we've got our display. It's not a vacuum fluorescent display, it's just an LED display, but I think it looks cool anyways. No unused indicators, though. And then we've got something about a timer mode. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. Again, somebody would have to shed some light on that. Reverse mode, Dolby noise reduction, relay and skip. That might have something to do with playing one song. This is for the synchro copy. And there's a blank search for deck two. That's for finding the end of the tape, so you can record, not 
over anything else. The counter is only for deck two, which I find kind of annoying because the Technics have got counters for both decks, but maybe that's because they're fancier models. Hardware power switch, which is a nice thing to have. Headphone output as previously mentioned. Recording level, which I believe might... No, I don't think it is. I thought it might be selectable for left and right. Recording balance control. Somebody's got it set off of center for some reason. Over here, we've got the playback controls for this deck, which are exactly the same as the other ones, except it's got record mute, pause, and record. I wonder what the MS means. I wonder if somebody can shed some light on that as well. Got a little bit more sunlight, so I could probably do the rest of this without the help of that. On the Sony, once again, hardware power switch, headphone output, and it's for the remote control. I wonder if my Sony remote would work with this. I think it would. Eject buttons for both the decks, and again, a little bit more sparing control because this isn't an auto reverse deck at all. We have play, fast forward, rewind, and stop. And then we've got stuff for the synchronous dubbing. High speed dubbing or normal speed. Controls for this deck are the same, except again we've got pause, recording, mute, and record. Here's our Dolby noise reduction switch. Where B and C, or off. A record level, and once again, only deck B has got the tape counter. And there's our display. Let's go ahead and plug these in and see them in action. We'll have a little bit of a recording session. Okay, so let's start with the Pioneer. It seems to be recording, but doesn't say how much time I have left on my tape. There we go. So you can see it's standard display. Both are set for forward play. We can hit play. And there you can see it's now playing. We can fast forward. I'm not sure if it'll track search. Yes, it will. Looks like it will track search. Or maybe it's just screwing up, I don't know. We can also reverse play. And that all works. Alright, so let's do the other deck now. I think I'm going to need light. My light is disappearing again. Right, so we'll hit play. Again, seems to be working just fine. Hit fast forward. Hit stop. Now here's the other feature that it's got. I can pause it. Which I think is neat. And there's your tape counter. Oops. Why can't you focus on that? There we go. Well, that's a little bit of focus. Probably need to put it into macro mode. And reverse works. Alright, so that's really all that I can think of to demonstrate for this, because I don't really have any other tapes that are capable of recording that I want to record on. So let's take a look at the Sony now. All right, power up the Sony. That's what it does. First, turn it on. So we'll insert a cassette here. Does it do anything? No, not really. Can hit play. And you can see it now playing. You press stop. Hit fast forward. Nothing is really displayed. Rewind. Wow, that works really well. The controls are a little laggy, I find. Like you can see, I'm going to press stop, fast forward. It takes a little bit of time when to stop. I don't know why that is. We'll go over and insert that into deck two now. Hit play. You can hit pause. Here you can see our tape counter over there doing its thing. 
All right. So I think it's time to have a listen. And I'm running out of tape here, so that's definitely time to have a listen to what it has to offer. <laughs> 